Last week, we learned about contextual parcels, how they affect the design of our backyard suite, and looked into the development approval process with the city of Calgary. Hi everybody, I'm Elliot Sarba, and welcome to another installment of the Anomaly blog and the third chapter of selecting the right lot. This is part two of setbacks and contextual parcels and how it affects the design of our backyard suite. It is at this point you should have a plan on what your living arrangement is going to be because it will be the focal point of your design. If you go down to the website www.anomalydraftinganddesign.com there is a very detailed blog about reading the real property report and analyzing your site plan. If you have any questions, you can contact the office number or email to info at anomalydraftinganddesign.com. Before we start, I would like to remind you that this video is based on the rules outlined within the City of Calgary Land Use Bylaw. Therefore, those living in different municipalities will need to confirm their zoning rules for backyard suites and to see which rules are applicable to them. Okay, the suite that started it all and will not be drawn again. It is a design influenced by the contextual parcel's dimensions. However, the homeowner realized it is not the best fit for that lot. So what happened? Well, it was the setbacks that were working against us. The homeowner wanted a two bedroom apartment. Therefore, our challenge was to keep the suite under 800 square feet and it is subject to the rules of an accessory residential building on a contextual parcel. First, we needed to maintain our clearances, our 5 meter setback from the main house, and then the 1.5 meter clearance from the rear property line. Just to be clear, any portion of the accessory residential building used as a living space needs to be a minimum of 5 feet from the rear property line. Other portions used as storage can be as close as 2 feet. But there was another setback we needed to consider the private amenity space. The amenity space is a designated area where its usage is for the tenant to be outside. Think of a space that will allow your tenant to barbecue or take in some sun. This space is an area of 80 square feet or 7.5 square meters and it has to have a minimum dimension of 5 feet so you cannot necessarily place it within the side yard. Folks who choose to have basement suites need to provide this as well. I'll go into this in another video. But for our backyard suite, we were maxed out. So I decided to place the amenity space upon the roof. But then we faced another problem. Since the amenity space was on the roof, it created a vantage point for anyone on the roof to look into neighboring yards. Therefore, we needed to add a privacy screen. Privacy screens are to be a minimum of six foot six in height, but placing them on this roof will exceed the overall building height. To get around this, I suggested we use potted trees because vegetation cannot count as structure. Our next challenge was accessing the roof. Before, the roof stairs would project into the side yard, so we wouldn't have stairs going over the bedroom. But here's the problem. Accessory residential buildings cannot have any projections into the side yards. This means no bump outs, no extended roof overhangs, no awnings and stairs and etc. Therefore, the stairs needed to be moved inward, impacting the ceiling framing of one of the bedrooms. The impact from these design decisions led to an increase in construction costs because we needed to make sure that that roof would never leak and be durable enough to be used by multiple tenants. Once COVID hit, the homeowner took the time to reevaluate their future living arrangements and realized that this suite will not work for them. So, since the homeowner had another property within the city, we decided to relocate this model over there. The lot was a lot bigger and also provided us the room to make more adjustments to the design and lower the overall construction costs. Now that you have an idea of the bylaw stipulations that can affect your design, you can see how backyard suites can become very complicated. But if you focus on the living arrangement, then you know how to direct your design. This is why I encourage homeowners to study their lot first. This concludes the series of selecting the right lot. I hope you found it very informative and interested to ask questions. 
If you have questions, you can visit the website www.anomalydraftinganddesign.com, call the office number, or email to info at anomalydraftinganddesign.com. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next week.